YouTube, YouTube, welcome back to the Hot Shot Haven. It's me, John, to bring you more informative content. Man, the video for the day is entitled Pros and Cons, Big Wheels. Hey, man, Flash and Dash. Hey, like I said before, the money will take your feelings. The numbers will take your feelings out of this stuff, man. Hey, why I unboat it? Why I took them off? Hey, and it, I mean it's it's simple, it, it it but it is a mathematical consequence to all of this stuff. It looks good, hey man, and I like it, man. You know we like to spend money. We like to, hey, if we getting it. You like to add triggers to the truck, bolt it up, sit it up big, pull up looking like hey, you know what I'm saying? I like that, and it's cool. But you know what I'm saying? Having a clean truck that is in in, in good work and order that actually does the job efficiently and effectively is really the main concern at the end of the day like i said <laughs> it ain't nothing sentimental about none of this stuff these trucks are tools they're expendable and like i say in, in the process of expanding these trucks we're trying to stretch the limits of, 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 of where these trucks can go how far these trucks can go the mileage that's attainable on these engines transmission drivetrain suspension brakes and everything man and at the end of the day it impacts your business in a negative way it doesn't matter if you make a lot of money or you don't make a lot of money it affects your profit margin just like in the last video where I ex explained how in business economics, prices are dictated on margins. And when you start to run at a margin that is that is is, is small, maybe a, a, a range of 10%, and you add wheels like this, you change the dynamics of all the numbers and the projections that you made when it comes down to fuel. That's the first thing. The second thing, when it comes down to maintenance. Okay, one of the biggest things I can say about running big wheels on the pro side is that shit looks good, man. It, it looks good. You pull up, you bolt it, man. It is nice. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with it. But the consequences of these, you know what I'm saying, really nice wheels, one of the biggest consequences is that they are heavy in comparison to... Uh, a stock steel or aluminum wheel that comes on the truck that's going to be probably maximum about 65 pounds total at the most, you know what I'm saying? And that's on a 20-inch rim. You got these wheels on the truck, you know what I'm saying? These 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 big guys, they, hey, they 20 by 12s. They got 35 by 12.5s, I think. And, uh, yeah, they fit, but they weigh 115 pounds apiece. So not only does that negatively impact the, the, the weight and the load carrying capacity of the truck and the trailer combination as you approach 26,000 in a non-CDL capacity, it also drops the effective gear ratio in the rear end and actually changes that 342, which is in most um Ram 25 and 3500s unless you elected to get the 373 or the 410 into a numerically lower ratio which would be a higher gear ratio effect effectively which would bring you lower rpms on the highway which some people would say well well if you're dropping the rpms that's going to save your fuel no um uh, quite the opposite um the rpm drop will sit the engine right in the peak torque which will be more effective but the load on the engine will increase at that point in time so you know you're putting an actual extra strain on the transmission as a whole the engine as a whole you're going to be running more boost and you will see this negatively impact your fuel economy don't ask me how i know i'm telling you from experience um these will cost much Money, as a fold, you know, and just like anything else that costs money, you you will have to replace these tires. And one of the uh, second uh, cons to running these wheels and tires on the road is that it makes really, really, it makes it really, really hard to find replacement wheels and tires. You can get a fifth wheel and tire and everything like that, but I'm just going to tell you first and foremost that in the rain, in the event you have a blowout or something like that with these tires, changing a 115 pound spare in a rainstorm with or without an impact wrench or whatever you may have is not going to be fun. 
it's not gonna be fun. So you know, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, hey man, maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. Okay, well you you quantify uh, how many miles that you're gonna run. You estimate that, and you you do a projection on what maintenance will cost you over that uh, period of time. Which in most cases, like I do, is a hundred thousand miles. Well, in a hundred thousand miles, normally you may or may not need brakes. Hundred thousand miles, you'll probably change tires once. A uh, hundred thousand miles, you probably won't need ball joints. Hundred thousand miles, first hundred thousand miles anyway, you probably won't need hubs. Uh, first hundred thousand miles, you probably won't need rear bearings. Uh, first hundred thousand miles, you probably won't need control arm bushings in the front and the rear. But with these 115 pound wheel and tire combinations or, or, or greater than, less than, but these large wheel combinations, you will need every single one of those components that I just listed within that first year because the rotational mass of these wheels and having to stop these wheels in it being exacerbated by the load of the trailer and the weight on the trailer. All of your front end components, suspension components, brake components, steering components will wear at a rapid pace. It's just the nature of the beast. You run high offset wheels or negative, a whole lot of negative offset on your wheels. You know what I'm saying? It looks good. It sticks out. Um, you know, besides rock chips and all that from slinging stuff up on the side, you can put mud flaps on that. It's going to wreck your hubs. It's going to actually wreck your ball joints because there's actually being a whole lot more leverage being placed on these parts than what factory intended, you know. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, when you add up the expense of the wheel, the expense of the replacement of the tires that do wear faster. These are mud tires. These are aggressive tires. You can get a, to a multi-terrain tire. You don't have. You can get an all-terrain tire. You don't have to get a mud tire. But just know that those are not highway tires. That's not what their their primary intention was. So you know they may not be loud or anything like that. But just know that they most of the time will wear faster. You will start off with a thicker tread, and you will notice that that thicker tread goes in half in about two months. Because the weight of that gooseneck on that ball is just peeling tires, you know, so it's just what it does, you know what I'm saying? And they make tires that are better and worse at this problem, you know, but at the same time, who has time and money to experiment with this, even with reviews and, and live through it and have to deal with that, you know what I'm saying? I advocate, you know what I'm saying, doing whatever is best in the, in the eyes of, of the accounting of your business. But, you know, just as a, you know, a, a, a guidance, you would like to do things that help promote and facilitate the business being profitable. Um, there are points in time where you would spend money like this on a truck that pipe possibly has dedicated runs and it runs short runs and it doesn't really stretch out or it pays so well that it kind of masks what's going on with the fact that the rims have dropped the fuel mileage from possibly 13 to about 10 for no, you know, real reason. Um, most of the time with these wheels and tires, it's going to be advantageous for you to run the transmission in fifth gear, have more RPM, cool the engine better, and prevent the transmission from downshifting early or late while pulling a heel and causing the engine to flare up, thereby wearing the transmission faster and burning more fuel. So, you know, it, it gets to the point where having wheels on like this is good if you have a dedicated customer that pays a top rate on whatever you're doing and you can see how to make it work and it really doesn't hurt you. But in the grand scheme of things, good old factory rims will be your best out. You know what I'm saying? You can easily get these replaced at discount tire, different place like that, and, and, and they probably won't have to order the tire because millions of trucks carry that same size tire so that's gonna be a big plus you know and like i said the numbers will take your your, your feelings out of all of it because you know everything looks good and you know say so i drop it on instagram and everything like that and boom it gets a lot of likes or whatever and that's fine but at the end of the day this shit about a dollar i ain't mean to whisper it like that because it ain't no secret see that's the whole thing about it. this shit about a dollar 
And at the end of the day, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. So, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, in, in my profession, you know what I'm saying, I don't even advocate people buying trucks that have wheels already on it because you don't know what the uh, first user did with it. But I did get a great deal on this truck. It had wheels on it. But I made preparation as soon as I purchased this truck. I had to sell takeoffs to put on that truck to get it right. Hey, and I hope this helps somebody, man. You know, hey, it looks good and, and everything is cool. But in the climate we have right now, you got to maximize profit. Hold on to that bread. You got to grind, man. You got to hold on to that bread, stack it up to the ceiling. And one thing about it, you just don't want to have liabilities such as these tires and these wheels that are hard to find replacement for you crack a rim then you really don't want to ride on the spare on the differentials because it's too big of a a, a a gap in size to not hurt the differential over time if you had to run it for an extended period of time to get where you were going so you know it's just it's just things like this you want to preserve what you have like I said, nothing sentimental about any of this equipment, but at the end of the day, you want to preserve it. You want to keep it running its best. You want to keep it performing its best. And you want to keep it doing all that at its best at the least cost. Hey, again, it's been a hot shot. Hey, man, Jonathan, hey, hey, we check it out, man. Y'all be blessed. Keep them wheels turned the right side down. Hey, hustle this thing. Grind, man. Hey, get that bread. Hey, but do it smart. Do it smart. Hey, I'm out.